Well, good afternoon and welcome to the Idahoan Show. Uh, this video is going to be sort of a follow-up to the study that I did on practical accuracy. Now, the big takeaway from that study was that the dominant factor in practical accuracy is stability. Uh, which in turn is a function both of the features of the gun that you're using and also of how you're using it. So, for example, this rifle has a stock. If I use the stock, uh, then I can shoot the gun more stably than if I were just shooting a handgun. Similarly, if it had a bipod and if I took time to deploy the bipod and assume a position in which I could use the bipod to good effect, you know, that too can have a dramatic impact on my stability and therefore on my ability to shoot accurately. Uh, now, that said, I think another factor that can also make a significant contribution to practical accuracy, but which may not have come out so much in our previous study because it was sort of dwarfed by the effects of stability, is the sights. Uh, and so, starting today, I'd like to set up a series of experiments focusing specifically on the contribution of the sighting system to practical accuracy. Now, the universal goal of shooting is to hit the target, which will be of a given size at a given distance, uh, as quickly as possible. And so I would postulate that there are going to be three distinct zones uh, in which different sighting systems are going to provide the optimal or the maximum contribution to practical accuracy. Uh, to begin with, starting at the muzzle and moving out to some finite distance for a target of a given size, we have what might be called the zone of intuitive shooting. Uh, you know, this is where the target is large enough and close enough that you really don't need to use your sights in order to be assured of a hit. Uh, and since you don't need your sights, taking time to line them up is just going to slow you down. So in the zone of intuitive shooting, the optimal sighting system really is no sights at all. Now, that said, there's probably very few guns that are going to be used exclusively in the zone of intuitive accuracy. Uh, and so most guns are going to need sights of some kind, and what kind of sights you put on them isn't really going to matter much in the zone of intuitive shooting because you don't need to use them anyway. At the other end of the spectrum, uh, beyond a certain distance, the target is going to start getting harder and harder to see with the unaided eye. And so there's a zone of magnified optics where, you know, scopes and other telescopic sights are going to be increasingly valuable in terms of their effect on practical accuracy. But in between these two zones, the zone of magnified optics and the intuitive shooting zone, I think there's also a zone where unmagnified optics are going to be just as effective as magnified ones and probably a little bit faster. So to get at least an anecdotal approximation of where these three different zones begin and end, I think what I want to do is first shoot a group with this rifle using an unmagnified red dot, uh, and then we'll take the sight off and try shooting another group and see how much it opens up. And just like we did last time, uh, I'll shoot a 10-shot group, throw out one outlier, and then convert the group size into a dispersion angle so we can get our approximate 90% uh, dispersion angle as a measure of accuracy. Okay, I didn't bother to zero this red dot first because I'm just going to take it off for the next test anyway. Uh, so we're shooting significantly high and to the right, but we're shooting about a one and three quarter inch group at 25 yards. 
uh, which gives us a dispersion angle of about 7 MOA. Well, without any sights, I was still able to shoot about a three and a quarter inch group. However, I did move up to a distance of only five yards. So that equates to about 65 minutes of angle. Okay, so it looks like shooting this rifle with this ammunition with an unmagnified red dot, the limit of my accuracy is about seven minutes of angle. Uh, and with no sights at all, it's about 65 minutes of angle. So if we standardize on a six inch target, uh, that means that the maximum distance at which I could expect to hit the target 90% of the time would be about 85 yards with the red dot or about nine yards with no sights at all. So that gives us at least an anecdotal measure of the boundary between the intuitive shooting zone and the intermediate zone, and then between the intermediate zone and the magnified zone. Now, by way of verification, I think the logical next step here would be to set up separate courses of fire focusing on targets in these different zones, and then run those courses of fire on the clock uh, using both a scoped rifle and a rifle with an unmagnified red dot. And based on what we've seen here, I would expect that, well, say we're using six inch targets, if the targets are primarily uh, at ranges of 85 yards and beyond, then the scoped rifle should be a little bit faster. Uh, or should enable us to run the course a little bit faster, whereas if they're at closer distances, then the red dot should enable us to clear the stage a little bit faster. Uh, and if we bother to set up a course of fire where all the targets are at less than nine yards, then I would expect it to be fastest just to shoot them without looking through the sights at all. Uh, however, when and if I can come up with the ammunition to set up such a course, uh, I will film that as a separate video. So until next time, thank you for watching The Idahoan Show.